Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with the protagonist, Charlie, returning from a pleasant trip with his son Anatole. When they arrive in town, the boy begs Charlie to let him out of the car and watch a busker perform. Charlie agrees and states that he'd be right there after parking his car. However, as he steps out of the vehicle, several masked men surround him, and begin shooting at him. In the end, he miraculously remains still alive. While losing consciousness, he recalls a memory, when he was still a young man in prison, receiving advice from an old mobster known as Old Timer on how to live a life of crime. Old Timer warns him that once he gets into the business, there is no getting out. Charlie is rushed to the hospital, where doctors are working hard to extract all 22 bullets lodged in his body. Elsewhere, we meet a man named Tony Tsakya, who learns about Charlie's condition. Tony Tsakya is clearly a powerful and cruel man, which raises the question of whether he was the one who hired a gang to kill Charlie. The shooting of Charlie is broadcast on national television, and the newscaster mentions that he is a retired mobster. Next, police captain Marie Goldman becomes interested in the case and decides to go to the crime scene. While Charlie is in surgery, we see another flashback to his childhood, when young Charlie learns that his rival murdered Old Timer. As a result, young Charlie and his best friends, Tony Tsakia and Kareem decide to murder a famous mobster named Hernandez, in retaliation for the death of their old mentor. Before setting out to exact vengeance on Hernandez, the young men swear an oath to remain friends forever. They are successful in exacting vengeance, and their journey into the Mafia world begins at this point. Back in the present, Police Captain Marie Goldman is confronted by her superior, who advises her to drop the case, because Charlie is a former mobster, and the police should simply let them kill each other. Marie ignores him and continues to investigate the case, in the hope of finding whoever is responsible for her husband's death. She then goes to Charlie's hospital room and begins questioning him. Charlie remains tight-lipped for some reason. When Charlie's lawyer Martin, and his trusted friends, Kareem and Pat walk into the room, she walks out frustrated. Captain Marie is tucking her son into bed at night when she receives an unsettling phone call. She drinks for the rest of the night as she mourns her husband's death. Meanwhile, Kareem is visibly upset and vows vengeance on whoever is to blame. On the other hand, Martin advises him to be patient, and wait for Charlie to come out of his coma. Kareem then instructs Martin to watch over Charlie and not leave him alone. Back at the hospital, a man disguises himself as a member of the medical staff and sneaks in. He then draws his gun, enters Charlie's room, and shoots him several times. Hearing the gunshots, the hospital staff rushes to the room and discovers the dead body. The patient however is not Charlie, as Captain Marie had moved Charlie to a different room prior to the shooting incident. The incident prompts Captain Marie to station a surveillance team just outside the hospital the following day. Tony Tsakya enters the hospital to see Charlie, and he expresses his relief that Charlie is still alive. Before leaving, he hands Charlie a greeting card informing her that there are surveillance cameras throughout the hospital and that the police are monitoring him via ambulance in front of the hospital. Soon after, Kareem and Martin pay a visit to Charlie in the hospital and bring him with them. Marie decides to tail their car after seeing this. It isn't long before Kareem realizes they are being followed, and he begins to accelerate. He then requests assistance from a friend. Kareem drives the car inside an old warehouse, where one of Tony's men is tied to a chair now that Mary is no longer following them. He is visibly terrified, to the point of pissing in his pants. Charlie then tells him that no harm will come to him as long as he cooperates. He admits that he did not participate in the shooting, but Tony Tsakya, Charlie's best friend, did send his men after him. Furthermore, Tony wants Charlie dead, because he retired and left him to run their illegal business on his own, and he is now afraid that Charlie will one day get in his way. Charlie is perplexed to learn all of this. Later, Kareem advises him to go kill Tony as soon as possible. But Charlie is conflicted because Tony is his best friend, and he recalls their childhood oath. Kareem relents, and Martin brings Charlie home, where he is warmly welcomed by his family. Kareem also returns home to his family, but when he walks out of his apartment that night, Tony's men kidnap and abduct him. It turns out that the man who was tied to the chair earlier had the idea to kidnap Charlie. Of course, the tied man's plan to gain Tony's sympathy backfires when he is shot to death. They then severed one of Kareem's fingers as a warning to his family. Charlie, who is just going about his business, is deeply shocked and devastated to learn of Kareem's death. He goes to the funeral and sees Kareem's family sobbing in pain. He becomes enraged and furious at the sight, and vows vengeance. Before he begins, he requests that Pat transport his family to safety. Later that night, we see Tony's men having a festive dinner party as if they have no remorse for torturing a man to death the night before. Their celebration however, is about to be cut short, 
because Charlie has become a certified party pooper. Now that the men are unarmed, Charlie gives them one last chance to say goodbye to their loved ones, and they are all killed. He then shoots one of them, knowing for a fact that he is one of the men who shot him, because he recognizes the watch he wears on his wrist. Charlie gets away with nothing but the power of intimidation while the rest of the men cower in fear. The following day, another of Tony's men is visiting the dead crew's grave, when Charlie arrives and murders him. Tony sends his men to ransack Charlie's home, in an attempt to find him and his family, realizing that Charlie is now out for blood. Fortunately, they can't seem to find anything. While all of this is going on, Charlie is relaxing with his faithful cat on the other side of town. Martin, the lawyer, arrives at Charlie's house to find it in shambles. He then rushes to inform Charlie of the situation. Unfortunately, one of Tony's men follows him to Charlie's hideout, and it isn't long before the two are surrounded. While Martin attempts to flee by boat, badass Charlie holds them off. However, one of Tony's men apprehends Martin and corners him. Charlie flees on his motorcycle while Tony's men pursue him. Because he rammed into a police car, he was immediately taken back into police custody, reuniting him with Captain Marie Goldman. In the interrogation room, Marie reveals to him some shocking information that she discovered during her investigation, specifically that she found a series of bullets lodged in a wall at the scene of the crime. To put it another way, one of the five people who shot at Charlie did not intend to kill her at all. Someone among them had no intention of murdering Charlie. In addition, Marie makes the decision not to arrest Charlie for the time being, due to the fact that she is under the impression that Tony Tsaki is responsible for the death of her husband. Later on that night, Tony Tsaki is seen enjoying the wedding celebrations of his daughter. Unbeknownst to him, Charlie is standing right outside his home, and she manages to take one of his men into custody. Before she kills him, Charlie orders him to hand over all of the information he possesses concerning Tony Tsaki's current drug transactions. When Tony finds out what took place not too much longer after, he becomes enraged. He then leaves the party and heads to his drug lab, where he finally lets loose, saying Tony has now lost his patience. He gives orders to his thugs to seize Charlie, regardless of whether or not he is still alive. The following day, Pat picks up Anatoly and Eva from school so that they can spend the day with Charlie. Up until the point where a van pulls up next to them, the day seems to be proceeding normally. Anatoly and Eva are taken captive by the men, and they flee the scene in their vehicle. After arriving at the scene, Marie discovers that it is already too late to help. It wasn't long after that when it came to light that the authorities had found Eva and taken her into custody. They are informed by Eva, who is bloodied and bruised, that Charlie will be arrested if he does not turn little Anatoly over to the authorities. After some time has passed, as Captain Marie is leaving the precinct, Charlie joins her in the car, completely by surprise. He asks her for help in fabricating a scenario in which Charlie has been arrested, so that Tony will give up looking for him and will be able to free his son. He is hoping that this will convince Tony to let his son go. Charlie even offers to cooperate with the authorities in exchange for having his son return to him. Marie agrees to help. When Tony finds out that Charlie has been arrested, he becomes even more enraged than he already was. As soon as he realizes that it is pointless to try to save Anatoly's life at this point, he immediately orders one of his goons to kill him. This thug is unaware that Charlie is following him on a motorcycle to the location where Anatoly is being held captive. Charlie is heading in that direction. Inside this house is another one of Tony's men who is keeping an eye on Anatoly for Tony. Immediately, he is given the instruction. Instead of carrying out the instructions, he hastily frees Anatoly, but then, Charlie is still outside. It would appear that he is caught in some kind of barbed wire, and is making frantic efforts to free himself. Dragging Anatoly outside, the thug forces him into the trunk of the car and then begins to drive away. Just as this is about to take place, Charlie is able to knock him out of the way and drag Anatoly away. When Charlie finally gets back to his house, he tells his wife that they are no longer required to remain hidden, because he has successfully taken out all of Tony's thugs. The following day, Tony lounges around in his home when Charlie comes to visit. In spite of everything that has taken place, it seems as though Charlie is willing to put everything in the past for the sake of their friendship. Despite Charlie's desire to avoid killing Tony, Tony, who has become power hungry, is intent on getting rid of Charlie as soon as possible. Tony holds him to the ground and aims a gun at him while he's there. Charlie takes advantage of the moment when Tony is taken aback, and gains the upper hand in their competition. Tony is taken into custody by the authorities just in the nick of time for running a drug ring. It has come to light that Charlie provided assistance to Captain Marie in her pursuit of adequate evidence to demonstrate Tony's guilt in the drug trafficking crime. When Charlie is later questioned by the police, it turns out that the cops are unable to find any evidence proving his involvement in any drug trade, 
so they are forced to release him. Martin greets him outside the precinct, and he immediately requests that Martin take them to the parking lot where he was shot. When they arrive, we learn that Martin was the shooter who was aiming at the wall at the time. Charlie, feeling betrayed, points his gun at Martin. Still, Martin continues to argue his case, claiming that Tony merely ordered him to kill someone but never specified who. He stated that he was shocked to learn that he had been assigned to kill Charlie, and that he was unable to carry it out. Charlie, it turns out, fired several bullets at the wall as a symbol of his gratitude for what Martin had done for him. We see Charlie and his family having fun at the beach, walking off into the sunset. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.